Thank you for choosing LiftMaster. This video will demonstrate how to troubleshoot the LiftMaster proprietary RFID long range reader with vehicle tags. Only LiftMaster tags work only with our proprietary RFID reader. The procedures demonstrated should only be performed by trained professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the manual. To locate a trained professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. The right combination of reader mounting location and vehicle tag placement result in the best performance. Several situations that require troubleshooting are when tags are not acknowledged by the reader and tags are acknowledged but the gate doesn't open. Possible causes include power issues, programming issues, range issues, and data interruption. To troubleshoot power issues, you'll need to check the voltage from the power supply, the type of wiring being used for power, the distance from the power supply to the reader. The RFID reader has a power transformer that supplies 12 volts DC. It must be plugged into a power source that supplies at least 120 volts AC. See the RFID manual for UL approved enclosures. Use a digital meter to measure the voltage at the closest termination to the reader. This is typically at the Wiegand interface module. If the voltage is less than 12 volts, make sure you are using the correct transformer that was supplied with the reader. If the correct transformer isn't being used, replace it with LiftMaster part number KSC12-3A. If the correct transformer is installed, move on to check the wiring. Make sure none of the wiring between the power supply and the reader is CAT5 or CAT6. This type of wire should never be used for power. Replace any CAT5 or CAT6 wire with wire that is stranded 18 gauge or larger. Next, check the distance between the Wiegand module and where the power supply plugs into the main power source. The distance should not exceed 50 feet. Distances over 50 feet can reduce the range of the reader. If the power supply is not plugged in less than 50 feet from the Wiegand interface, you'll need to relocate it so that it is. If you've corrected all issues with power and there are still problems with performance, replace the power supply. You must use power supply part number KSC12-3A. If replacing the power supply doesn't resolve the problem, check to see that the main power source hasn't caused an issue with the reader. See the RFID reader manual for detailed instructions. Once you've eliminated power as the source of the issue, move on to check the programming. On the Wiegand interface, unplug the serial connector from the reader. It's the middle connector with green, white, and yellow wires. Unplug the power supply and plug it back in. Reconnect the serial connector. If the reader regains normal function, then the issue may be on the Wiegand interface module. Check the arming loop setting of the Wiegand interface module. The Wiegand module dip switch number 5, labeled loop, should be in the off position. If this dip switch is on, the arming loop feature in the Wiegand module will replace the RFID reader into standby mode when the loop input is not active. If setting this switch to off does not clear the issue, replace the Wiegand interface module with service kit part number KS2W. Next. Troubleshoot the range of the reader. The average read range should be 20 to 30 feet, depending on the tag placement and vehicle. When testing the range, temporarily attach the tag to the intended surface using tape if needed. Follow the instructions in the manual to ensure the tag is mounted correctly and away from any interference sources. Other factors that affect range are interference from other electronic devices, either relocate the devices or move the reader away from the source of interference. Obstructions such as tree branches or plants, and metal posts and gate arms. Clear away obstructions or relocate the reader so there is a clear line of sight between the reader and the tags. Adjust the angle of the reader. Check the manual for more information about optimal position. Lastly, check the read range on the Wiegand interface module. It is set to the maximum setting from the factory. If it is not on the maximum setting, follow these steps. On the Wiegand module, move the dip switch number 6, labeled Setup, to the On position to enter programming mode. Turn the adjustment pot all the way clockwise. This is the maximum setting. 
All of the LEDs on the display should be on. Press the reset button to send the new range setting to the reader. Now move dip switch number 6 labeled setup to the off position. If the access control system is receiving data from the Wiegand module, the reader may beep and show the expected indicator lights, but the gate will not open. There are three LED lights you'll use to confirm the data is being transmitted. The blue LED on the front of the reader, the orange LED on the Wiegand module, and the red LED on the Wiegand module. First, verify that the reader is acknowledging the tag by holding it in range of the reader. If the reader doesn't acknowledge the card, the problem is likely to be either no power or low power, or dip switch number 5, labeled loop, is in the on position. Check your power supply function, wire type, and distance between the power supply and reader, and fix the problem as needed. If the dip switch setting is the issue, turn dip switch number 5, labeled loop, off. If the LED on the reader does flash blue, Confirm that the red LED on the Wiegand module is also flashing. If it's not, double check your wiring and make sure all connections are correct. The orange LED indicates when a Wiegand pulse is sent to the access controller. If the orange LED doesn't flash, you need to replace the Wiegand interface module. If all three LEDs are flashing, then you need to check the wiring between the Wiegand module and your access controller. Make sure your wiring run is less than max distance of 350 feet. On the Wiegand interface, measure the DC voltage between data 0 and COM and data 1 and COM. The voltage should be at least 5 volts DC. If not, check for cable distance and poor connections. If the indicator lights are all normal but the gate isn't opening, Try swapping the data 0 and data 1 wires coming from the access controller to the Wiegand interface. If that doesn't fix the issue, make sure the access control system is set to receive 26-bit Wiegand input. Also make sure you're using LiftMaster tag part number LMUNTG and LMHNTG. If you've made all of these corrections, the issue is probably with the gate operator or the access control system. Lastly. If the reader is sending too many tag reads to the access controller, change the Wiegand retransmission delay setting following the steps in the manual. To learn more about access control product training opportunities, please visit the LiftMaster Training Academy at liftmastertraining.com.